Welcome to AP Statistics. We're going to continue talking about exploring quantitative data, but in this video we're going to focusing on measures of center. Now, anytime you're asked to describe a distribution for your data, you definitely want to talk about shape, center, and spread, and possibly outliers, but in this video we're going to focus on center, and you need all of those things to really give a great depiction of what your data is doing. So what is a distribution again? Don't forget a distribution is what va what values your variable takes on and how often it takes on those values. So we definitely wanna make sure that when we're talking about the data, we focus on what the center could be. Now let's not forget about quantitative variables, right? So when working with quantitative variables, we can make a graph and talk about the data we collected as a whole. We can describe the data, summarize the data, analyze the data, there's so many fun things we can do. But we can also describe and summarize and analyze the data using numbers. So not only can we use words, and when you talk about shape, hopefully you watch that video, you could definitely use words, but when you talk about the center, we actually have numbers that can tell us what the center is. And I'm assuming you guys are pretty familiar with this, but let's not forget about this. Any number that describes or summarizes a set of quantitative data from a sample is called a statistic. So any number that we're gonna talk about in this video today would be called a statistic if it came from a sample. Any number that describes or summarizes a set of quantitative data from a population is called a parameter. Now, typically, we can't get all the data from a population because that's hard to do. So typically, we work with statistics. Now, here's the key thing. If the data came from a random, representative, unbiased sample, then the statistics should be close to their corresponding parameters. But if it came from a sample, it's called a statistic. So we're going to be talking a lot about statistics in this video. And the statistics we want to focus on are ones that can tell us about the center of our data. Now, here are the two ways that we can measure the center of our data. And they should both be pretty familiar to you. The mean, maybe you're more familiar with hearing the word average, but in pure statistics, we call that the mean. And the median as well. So let's talk about the mean first. So the mean, you know, describing in words, it's the sum of all your data values divided by the number of values. Very simple. How do you find an average? You add up all your values together and divide by how many you have. Very, very simple. Now, in this class, the symbol we're going to use for the mean is X bar. So actually, I want to talk about this really important thing for a second. So X bar, it's kind of funny. It's literally with an X at the bar on top of it. It's called X bar. If we're talking about the mean of a sample, X bar is the proper symbol for the mean. If we're talking about the mean of an entire population, we actually use the Greek letter mu. M-U, that's written with a U. It looks like a cursive U, but the front leg, I guess you could say, is a little bit longer. So that's the Greek letter mu. And if we're talking about the mean of an entire population, we would use mu to represent that mean. But we typically don't know that, right? It would be weird to know all of your data from an entire really big population. So typically, we just know X bar, which is the mean of our sample. Now, here is the official statistical formula to find the mean. But all you need to know is you add up all your values and divide by N. But this is the proper symbol here. So first off, here's the divide by N. Dividing by N is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over N. This E-looking thing, that is a Greek letter sigma that represents the sum. So all we're doing here is we're saying, hey, sum up all of your individual values. We're just calling that XI for right now because they're individual. So you're going to take your first value, your second value, your third value, your fourth value, your fifth value, your sixth value. You're adding up all of your individual values. And you're going to, again, divide by N. N is how many values you had in total. Uh, but dividing by N is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over N. That's where this fancy formula comes from. But don't worry about, oh, I have to memorize, I have to use that formula. We're typically going to allow our calculator to figure this out for us anyway. Now, a couple of facts about the mean. The mean takes every single value into account. So this means it's easily impacted by outliers. If there's one really, really big upper outlier, the mean has to use it when it calculates itself. So it's typically going to be a little bit higher. It's going to move towards that outlier. Or if there's one really, really, really low outlier, the mean has to take that value into account. So it will might move towards it. So again, the mean is like trying to be fair. Every value matters equally right? So it, it tends to go where the majority of the data is. And if there's some really high numbers or low numbers, it might slowly go that way. So with skewed data, it will move towards the tail. So let me just kind of draw a real rough picture of this. 
So if your data is skewed to the right, for example. Now, even though the majority of the data is down here on the left side, there is some data on the right, and some of these values might be outliers. But again, even though there's only a few of them over here, the mean has to care about them. So the mean might move a little bit to the right towards that tail to adjust for those numbers. Same thing if we have data that's skewed to the left. Even though the majority of your data is to the right, these low values matter to the mean. It can't ignore them. So sometimes the mean ends up moving a little bit to the left towards that tail. Now, when data is nice and symmetric, it kind of balances out because yeah, there's some low values. Yeah, there's some high values, but they're on both sides. So the mean's going to typically fall right smack dab in the middle. And that is a terrible drawing right there. All right, let's talk about the median next. The median is simply the middle value when the data is in order typo there it is it is the middle value of the data is in order so if you just put all of your data in order in a line it's the dead center value so when your data values are odd so for example if you have one two three four five data values i'm just using dots to represent the numbers there is your median it's literally the dead center so i don't even care well not me the median i guess the median doesn't even care what these numbers are this could be, this low value could be a 10, this low value could be a 0.1, this low value could be 0.0001, and that's not going to change the fact that right here is the middle. Now, if you have an even number of values, so let's just say we have six, I'm using dots to represent my values here, then we have to take the middle of the average of the middle two. So we look at the middle two, and we average them together. So we add them together and divide by two, and the median's gonna fall right smack dab in between them. That way, again, it's right in the middle of the data. Now, please listen to these words very carefully. There is no formula to find the median. There is no formula that's gonna tell you what the median is. But this formula can be used to find the position of the median. Again, I can't say this enough. This formula does not tell you what the median is. It tells you where to find it. So let's just say that you have 17 data values. Here's how this formula works. First, you got to put your data in order. 1 through 17, put the data in order, lowest to highest. Then you're going to do 17 plus 1. N is how many values you have. 17 plus 1 is 18. 18 divided by 2 is 9. That means the ninth value, counting in order from the lowest to the highest, the ninth value is your median. So you got to count to find it. So you got to have your data in order and you got to look, okay, the ninth value is the median. The ninth value could be 22, could be 167, could be a thousand. I don't know, but it's just the ninth value once they're in order. Let's just do one more quick example of that. Let's just say that we have 20 pieces of data, put them in order, low to high, and then we put a 20 in here for N. That's our total number of values. 20 plus 1 is 21, divided by 2 is 10 and a half. So that means that the median is located right between the 10th and the 11th value, right? That's where 10 and a half would fall. So you take the 10th value and you take the 11th value and you average them together and the median is going to be right in between there. So again, this formula that I just highlighted down there, n plus 1 divided by 2, does not tell you what the median is. It tells you where to look to find it. Now, the nice thing about the median is it's not impacted by outliers. Remember, this high value over here could be an outlier. Like all of these values could be like, you know, I don't know, 11, 10, 15, 16, 18. And then this is uh, 1,046 or 42, whatever. Okay, it, that doesn't matter. The median doesn't care that you have this enormous outline in your data. It just wants to be in the middle. So huge outliers, low or high, will not impact the median at all. Uh, it represents the middle. So 50% of values are above it, 50% of values are below. It just represents the dead middle. It's also known as the second quartile, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. But again, it's the idea that it's dead set in the middle. The actual value of the numbers doesn't matter. It just wants to be the middle value. Now, the next question is, you know, oh, what kind of work do I have to do to find the mean or median? Well, listen, when it comes to find the mean and median, we don't do it by hand. That's just silly. Now, you could, but listen, we have technology that can make finding the mean and the median very easy using the calculator. I will have some later videos that just specifically show you how to find the mean or median, but hopefully uh, your teacher will be showing you how to use your calculator and or uh, Microsoft Excel and or Google Sheets to actually locate the mean and median in data. It's quite easy. It saves you a lot of time. 
But let's just kind of talk about this real quick because, you know, it's not overly difficult to do sometimes here. So let's say that we have a sample of 13 females and we ask, hey, how long does it take you to commute to work in the morning? That's how long it takes you to drive to work. And these are their 13 times in minutes. So if you were asked to find the mean, all you got to do is go to your calculator right now, add all these values together and divide by 13. I'll give you a second to do that. And if you add them all together and divide by 13, you should get a mean. Notice I'm using X bar here because this certainly didn't come from all women in the entire row. It just came from a sample. So my X bar, if you're doing it correctly, should be 20.769. I like to have three significant digits there after the decimal point. So 20.769, don't forget units, and that would be minutes. Okay, what about the median? Oh, another important thing is we don't really have a symbol for the median. We just write median. We don't really have a symbol for it at all. So the median is going to be the dead center. So I have 13 values. Now, I already had them in order. So let me show you how this formula works. So the formula, not to find the median, but to locate it, is 13 plus 1 divided by 2. 13 plus 1 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4 four, five, six, seven. There it is. This is the seventh value. The seventh value is 22. That's my median. 50% above it, 50% below it. It is the dead center of my data. So my mean is about 20.769 and my median is 22. Now, I talked earlier about how you could actually use these values to understand shape. Now, listen, if your mean and median are pretty close together, you're probably fairly symmetric. So in this previous example, they weren't too far off, 20.769, pretty close to 22. I mean, they're obviously not exactly the same, but they're fairly close. So that means my data would be fairly symmetric. If they're really close, you'd be really symmetric. If they're kind of close, you're kind of symmetric. Like, you know, feel free to use adjectives here. Now, when they're very far apart, that's when you become skewed. So when you're skewed right, the mean is going to be really high compared to the median. Because remember, we talked about this already. When you're skewed to the right, the mean is going to go towards the right. Now, it's not going to go flying all the way at the top, but it's going to go towards the right. And that's going to separate the median from the mean. So if the mean is higher, that's a sign you're skewed right. When you're skewed left, the mean is going to be lower. Because again, when you're skewed left, the mean is going to move towards the tail. It's not going to go all the way down, but it is going to move towards that tail, making it lower than the median. So these are some ways you can actually use the mean and the median to get a maybe an idea, a rough idea of what your shape could be. So typically, if there are outliers on one side of the data, the mean will get dragged to their side as well, which turns, you know, which in turn makes the most distribution skewed. So when you do have an outlier, if you have a really big outlier, it really does skew your data. And that is, again, another reason why when you're skewed left, maybe because of an outlier, the mean is going to be lower than the median. Now, another thing we want to be able to do, well, oh, got a little ahead of myself, is be able to look at a graph, typically histograms, and understand what is the mean and what is the median of that graph. Now, listen, we talked about in the graphing videos that one of the biggest drawbacks of graphs, like a histogram, is you don't know the actual data. So, for example, this data represents how much people spent at a drugstore one day. You know, for example, I know that five people spent somewhere between $23 and $25, right around in here. But I don't know what the actual values were. So the one thing I cannot do with a histogram is I cannot calculate the mean. I can't. But because I see the shape of this is skewed right, I do know that the mean is probably going to be, not probably, it will be higher than the median. Also, this outlier, these even these potential outliers here, these, these few high values, they're going to pull the mean higher than the median. Yeah, I can't calculate the mean. It's impossible without the actual values in front of me. But from the shape, I kind of could get a good feel for the data. Now, same thing with the median. I don't actually have the values, but I could tell you roughly where the median falls. So again, think about this. There's 100 people. So 100 plus 1 divided by 2. 100, 100 plus 1 is 101. Divided by 2 is 50.5. Now, that does not mean the median is 50.5. That tells me that the median value is right between 50 and 51 value in order. So a histogram does put the data in order. So let's try to find roughly where that median would be. So we got eight values here. We got 13 values here. Eight plus 13 is 21 total values. I'm trying to find the 50 and 51st because that's where the median is going to fall. 
All right, now we got 11 values here. So that now brings us to 32 values. And then we got 14 values here. So now that brings us to 46. And then we have 22 values here. So if I take 46 plus 22, now I'm way over. I'm at 68. I'm over the 50 and 51st value. So that means that the median between 50 and 51 is somewhere in this interval, somewhere in this bin. Again, I'm just knowing this because remember this formula, n plus 1 divided by 2, tells you where to look to find the median. So 100 plus 1 divided by 2 is 50.5. That means right between the 50th value and the 51st value is the median. Now, I don't know what that number is because, again, the histograms don't show you what the actual values are. But I do know where that 50th and 51st value fall. 8, 13, 11, and 14 is 46. So that means the 47th, the 48th, the 49th, the 50th, and the 51st value must be somewhere in this bin. So I don't know precisely what the median is, but I do know that it's somewhere between $13 and $15. Somewhere in this bin between $13 and $15 is the median. And my best guess, based on the fact that I have a couple outliers and I am skewed right, is that somewhere slightly above that is going to be the mean. Again, I can't calculate the mean, but it's probably a little bit higher than that median bin. Now, remember, when you're nice and symmetric, the mean and median end up being very close. So again, 500 people were asked to tell me how many steps they took yesterday. So we had to wear a fitness tracker, and they told me how many steps they took. And the distribution of this data is very, very symmetric. So that is why, um, again, do I know the actual values? No, I just know how many values fall into each interval, but I don't know what those values are. But because I see the shape is nice and symmetric, some low values on the left, some, some lower on the right, it goes it tails off to both sides, nice and symmetric. I would imagine that the mean and the median are very close to 2,500 steps. Is that exact? No, it could be slightly more, slightly less. But again, it's nice and symmetric, so it's going to be right there in the center. And again, because I'm symmetric, the mean and the median are going to be very, very close together. Whereas when you're skewed right or skewed left, the mean is going to go towards that skew and then skewed right be a little higher, skewed left be a little bit lower like we saw in the last example. So when you do have a graph and a graph only, you cannot tell me exactly precisely what the mean or the median is, but you can be approximate with where it is based on understanding how the mean and median are calculated and um, correspond. So... Awesome video. Hopefully you understand measures of center, mean, and median. You're going to typically use a calculator or some type of program to find them, but it's not that bad. If you have a small set of data, you should be able to do it pretty quickly by hand like we saw in that one example.